welcome to another episode of Coffee with Kareem. Today's show is called Attitude Gratitude, How to Make the Soul Smile. So back in 2012, I had a young man uh, in college reach out to me for um, services, for spiritual counseling and and help. He's going through a rough time and uh, he didn't have the money. So I said, Ya Allah, Bismillah, let's do it for the sake of Allah. And um, subhanAllah, the next day, um, a former client uh, emailed us and he said, hey, you know, I had services about a year ago. It was very beneficial. It really helped me. And I just feel inspired to sponsor someone. So here's an amount and uh, let's do it. I was like, subhanAllah, this is all coming together for this uh, young man. And um, I let the young man know and and he was very, very grateful. And uh, he connected with this brother who sponsored him and voiced gratitude. And, um, And then later that young man also sent me a card. Um, which I still have on my fridge until today, years and years later. uh, And it says, gratitude is the soul's way of smiling. So today's show, I want to talk about how we can actually cultivate this experience of having your soul smile through a couple of steps. But first, let's get a better sense of what gratitude means and entails uh, specifically according to the Quran. So one of my favorite verses is chapter 2, uh, verse 152, um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, remember me and I'll remember you, which is just such a mind-blowing concept, and um, we'll come back to that uh, later in the show. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ So shukr is gratitude, or to give thanks and appreciation. And in this particular verse, as well as in uh, chapter 14, verse 7, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, If you're grateful, I will add more favors unto you. But if you deny them, kafartum, my punishment is severe. So here we see the sequence or this pair of shukr with kufr. So when you have shukr, gratitude, i.e. appreciation, acknowledgement of your blessings and the good things in your life, you are doing the opposite of kufr. Kafir comes from the word kafara, which means to cover something up. Okay, And even the English word cover is, sounds very close to this, so it'll be easy for us to remember, inshallah. So the opposite of gratitude is to cover up or ignore or not pay attention to the blessings and the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. Now, I think like for a lot of us that grew up reading, you know, English translations of the Quran, you know, the word kafir has been translated as, you know, disbeliever, sometimes infidel. Um, And another way to understand it is it's an ingrate. So a person who's really just, you know, sickly ungrateful. And how does that really work? You're a kafir in this uh, and being ungrateful in this kind of theological context. Well, think about it. If you accept the world view that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the gift of consciousness and existence, let's say a person who is rejecting the faith at the time of one of the prophets, you have to understand there's a difference between I'm not convinced of this versus I know internally and in my heart that this is true and right, but for whatever egoic reasons, I want to reject it and cover it up. So it's almost like kufr is when the candle of iman lights bright in your heart, but you choose to snuff it out. So the kufar in the context of the prophetic missions are individuals who are choosing to reject and to cover up the truth right in front of them. And that's why the punishment is so severe. Okay, but Kufr can also be experienced with everyday people like you and me who are just ignoring or not paying attention to the truth as we know it, uh, the blessings that we actually have, and rejecting all the good that we actually experience. That's also a form of kufr as well. In the sunnah, we're also taught that every time you commit a sin, consciously and knowingly, you are in a state of kufr when you are committing that sin. 
How can you be in a state of kufr? Well, because in the moment of doing something haram or wrong, you are covering up your iman, aren't you? You're ignoring and veiling yourself from everything that you know to be true. Like, I'm going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day, or I know that this is wrong or morally wrong. And you are choosing through your ego to cover that up or reject it or ignore it for that moment or that duration of the sin. And this is why after the sin, you can make tawbah because now you are lifting that veil or that cover which was over your iman and what you knew to be true, good, and beautiful. Now, let me walk you through a couple of steps or techniques that I have used in my life and have helped others um, to actually help them become more grateful. So number one, choice. Gratitude, first and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, is a choice. We choose what we want to see. We choose what we want to focus on. We choose what we want to accept or reject. Hence why a kafir is somebody who is choosing to reject or deny the truth um, or the blessings in front of them. So an exercise that I would encourage everybody to try and something that I do um, on a yearly basis is I create a timeline of my life. And the purpose of this exercise is to make sure that I map out my life in all honesty, the good and the bad. Because if I don't remember and see the good things that happen too, I may end up fixating on just all the negative stuff. Because as we know, the things that have hurt us in the past, that have traumatized us in the past, the suffering and, and discomfort we've gone through, that tends to be the stuff that sticks the strongest because as human beings, we are wired to survive and to prosper. And so the things that we know could take away from our prosperity and survival, uh, it sticks with us. And these become now triggers and defense mechanisms. And we want to do everything we can to avoid them. But sometimes we do that in an unhealthy way, where all we focus on is the negative stuff, because we want to make sure that doesn't happen again. But if we only focus on it, then that's what we're going to keep reliving over and over again. So how do we do this exercise? Take, um, I like to do it on a whiteboard, but you can do it on a piece of paper or poster, whatever. Draw a thick horizontal line, okay, and this represents the timeline of your life. Break this timeline into four sections, and you can choose where you want to begin, I mean, depending on your age. But I like to do like, you know, every, f like each line represents five years, so it's like quarters. So let's say I start 1999 or when I started high school, all the way up until today. And above the horizontal line, you're going to take a blue pen or marker and start to make very small branches that have dates, if you remember them, or just the events of all the positive and wonderful things that happened. And below the horizontal line, you use a red marker, and you also do um, branches that come out vertically to represent the negative times or the tests and trials that you've been through. So let's take like, you know, let's say just the last year. You can probably look back and think of some things that happened in the last year which were very painful and difficult. Um, maybe you lost somebody that you loved. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you got divorced. Maybe your child got sick. On the other hand, maybe in the last year after you lost your job, you got help from friends and realized that there were people that cared about you and they helped you get a job. And within three months, you got one, an uh, even better position than the one you lost. So that's a pro that was with the hardship. Uh, maybe when your child got sick, you were able to also get funds or raise money. Or turns out your insurance would cover everything when you thought it didn't. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you these openings. So when you have an honest engagement with the events of your life, you will start to see that Allah Rahman Ar Rahim, that there's always going to be good and bad in your life. Because if you don't really map all this out and look at it, then what tends to happen, especially with very negative people, they're negative because as we learned, that's what they're choosing to see and what they're choosing to focus on. So they're choosing to focus only on the events that's below the line, and they forget about the events that are on top, or they're choosing to cover it up. Like, oh, I've never seen any good in my life, and this and that. Because even as Allah subhanahu wa says, 
إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ That with hardship is also ease. It's, it's together. And so anytime you, you look on your own life, you'll find evidence of times that were bad and tough and you weren't sure how you were going to make it or if you can bear it, but you're still here. And a lot of good things probably came as a result of that or after that. And that's just the way life is, right? It's ups and downs and it's never a continuous stream of bliss and joy but the level of happiness and gratitude that we'll experience has to do a lot with what we choose to focus on. So I like this timeline exercise and I invite everyone to try it because it really gives you a sense of, huh, looking back, like there was a lot of great things that happened too. Why am I so negative? Why am I always focusing on just the negative things? And subhanAllah, the people that maybe you may know that are always negative, subhanAllah, they also seem to be the people that negative stuff keeps happening to them. I mean, that's very interesting. I mean, we, we have these concepts of like the law of attraction. Um, of course, uh, what we focus on is what we're going to perceive and hence it's going to uh, create our moods and experiences. But also in a hadith uh, Qudsi found in, in Bukhari and elsewhere, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنَّ عَبْدِي بِي I am as my servant perceives me to be or conceives me to be. If he perceives good, then he will experience or have good. If he perceives or projects evil and harshness, then that is also what they will experience in their life. So it's like there's this co-participation with our consciousness, our perception and uh, concepts of God, which actually influences our reality directly, subhanAllah. So this is the, per the perception and projection cycle that um, teaches us that what we choose to see is how we're going to construct the world, and how we construct the world is how we're going to continuously project out onto it. So for instance, if I believe all people are liars, every time I interact with people, I'm always going to experience uh, skepticism, I'm going to distrust them, I'm like, oh, this person has a, a different motive, and it's going to start impacting all my experiences and in encounters with people, because I have now concluded or chose to see the world in a way that all people are dishonest and distrustful, and that is going to um, shape my experiences in life. The second tip to improve your capacity for gratitude, increase and enhance in your knowledge. This is such an important point, and it is a, a virtue and a merit found in almost all cultures and all religions, seeking knowledge, discovering wisdom and truth. I mean, this is a sign of a healthy human being, right? Because humans are curious by nature. Now, in Islam is no different. Islam teaches you to seek knowledge, okay? And think about it. If my knowledge about myself or reality is so limited, I have such tunnel vision about how things work in the world, then I'm going to have very limited access to what to be grateful for. But if all of a sudden I tell you that your body has, you know, billions and billions of cells and trillions in, of connections and processes to help your organs run and your heart beat every single day automatically for you to sit here and listen to this podcast, uh, and you learn more about the anatomy and biology of how you work, all of a sudden you open up this whole new dimension of knowledge and data about yourself and everything that's working in you properly. And all of a sudden you have, wow, like I never thought about those things. You know, the fact that my eyelids have muscles in them. And if those muscles become weak, I can't even hold uh, my eyes open, my eyelids up. And there's people like that. Um, or the fact that you have, uh, you know, all of your limbs or that you don't have any major diseases or you have control over your bowel movements uh, and so on and so forth. When you learn more about the nature of any subject, you have a lot more things to be grateful for. So the more knowledge you have, not only do you get closer to the creator, because you can only know the creator through studying the creation and serving the creation, but you also can have way more gratitude because now you're like, there's so many things when I think about it, I can be grateful for. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in chapter 14, verse 34, as well as chapter 16, 
uh, verse 18, and if you should try to count all of the favors of Allah, you could never enumerate them. And this is really true because the more knowledge you have, the more data points you have, the more the more things you can be grateful for. Okay, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, I think that verse also teaches us that you know how will you know what to be grateful for or all the blessings you can count if your knowledge is so limited about yourself and the universe and the earth around you. Let's say you have a really dear friend. And one day, you know, your mom or your dad takes you aside and says, hey, you know your friend uh, Joe? Um, do you know that Joe was would come every week to visit your mom when she had cancer and uh, ask us if we need any groceries or, or, you know, need anything? And I'm like, whoa, I never knew that. Like, I always knew he was a great guy and he was a solid uh, friend, but I didn't know he would go out of his way and do that. And your parents are like, yeah, like, that's Joe. You're like, wow, mashallah, like you, the gratitude you have is even more for this great friend because you now learned new things about what they do. And similarly, the more you learn about all of the processes, miracles, if you will, that's happening moment to moment in the universe and in your existence, you will not be able to stop thanking God for everything. So knowledge is a very important step, and I would encourage people to, you know, start seeking knowledge outside of your specialization. You know, if you're a doctor, learn a little bit about astrophysics. Um, if you're a, you know, computer scientist, learn more about um, psychology and, and human sciences and how, and how the human being works. Just expand your knowledge in any way you can, and it's going to start to make you realize how, number one, everything is interconnected, and there are so many universal patterns in nature and the order of reality. And of course, it's going to enhance your appreciation and acknowledgement of who Allah SWT really is. I mean, how can you really feel grateful if you don't have enough data points of somebody's generosity, like your friend Joe? So think about all the data points of Allah that many of us walk around every day we never think about, we may never discover, um, and more importantly, we never show gratitude for. So it's part of our responsibility to leave ignorance and have more nur and light and become illuminated to all these blessings that actually exist. The third step of enhancing your gratitude is, of course, dhikra, remembering and recalling the favors and blessings. So this kind of combines number one, which is the attitude and choosing to see the good, and number two, uh, knowledge and expanding your knowledge of the blessings and favors that exist in your life. Um, so once you have uh, more knowledge, you have more things that you can remember and recall and access to feel grateful. And you certainly have a lot more data and content to uh, choose to see in a positive way because there's so much more information that you have about all the blessings and the favors that you have. So dhikra and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 13, verse 28, those who believe and whose hearts are assured by the remembrance of Allah, undeniably, by the remembrance of Allah, the hearts feel uh, assurance and tranquility. So, dhikra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only gives us assurance and tranquility, um, it also gives our heart peace and rest. And that's one of the effects of feeling uh, gratitude. Because gratitude is connected to contentment, like, I'm happy, I'm good, I'm grateful, no complaints, you know, that's contentment. And you can't have contentment if you're not constantly trying to remember and recall and see uh, and be aware of the favors and blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. So I would encourage everybody to, you know, you can do this in a couple of ways, but two suggestions is having daily dhikra, um, you know, doing tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, specifically, you know, alhamdulillah, wa shukri lillah, um, thanking God every day for the fact that you got to wake up and you took another breath and get up and, and move. I mean, that's a huge blessing that many of us take for granted. Um, another thing that might be helpful is sit down and write 10 things that you're really grateful for in your life. 
stick it up on your wall, on your mirror, and remember that. If this is visually in front of you, and you're being reminded of it, you're, inshallah, going to choose to see this more often than all the negative or the bad stuff or the tests that you currently have in your life. And lastly, um, I think it's very important part of dhikra or remembering and recalling is to make sure that you call your friend Joe and thank them for being such a wonderful person. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, those who don't show thanks to uh, the people have not shown thanks or gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So clearly there's a connection here that all of the wonderful things that have happened for you in your life, a lot of those things have happened through other people. And if we're not going to take the time to thank them and show gratitude, then we're not really grateful towards Allah because it's all connected. I want to wrap up the show by coming back to the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ وَاشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember me and I'll remember you. Such a mind-blowing concept. The creator of the heavens and earth is telling us that when you remember me, I'll remember you. When I'm on your mind and in your heart, you're going to be on my mind. So it's like you're going to be in God's mind, so to speak. He'll be thinking of you too. And this really means that you have, as a human being who chooses to be grateful for his or her existence and consciousness, you are choosing to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you do this, your significance, your meaning, your value, your worth is apparent and clear. And believe it or not, commonly in therapeutic treatments and psychological approaches, you know, how do you help people with addictions and depression and, and, and different types of things? One of the, the important qualities to help a human being um, internalize is a sense of significance and meaning and value and purpose. And that's something that Allah SWT is saying you can have simply by remembering me. Because it doesn't get any more significant than Rabbil Alameen remembering you, does it? Um, also, when Allah SWT says, I'll remember you, uh, you are now establishing more intimacy and closeness, which leads to love and bonding, which are also two things that all humans need for uh, optimal health. The Hadith Qudsi, which I discussed earlier, um, I am as my servant thinks I am. I want to share the whole translation of this hadith. It's found in Bukhari, Muslim, at tirmidhi uh, and Ibn Majah. Um, so it says, I am as my servant thinks of me. I am with him or her when he makes mention of me. And if he makes mention of me to himself or herself, I make mention of him or her to myself. And if he makes mention of me in an assembly, I make mention of him in an assembly better than it. And if he draws near to me an arm's length, I draw near to him a cubit. And if he draws near to me a cubit, I draw near to him a fathom, or a longer distance. And if he comes to me walking, I go to him running. Subhanallah. I mean, that's something I feel grateful for right there. You know, that hadith and, and this ayah, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is showing this mercy and beauty. And this is one of the things that we all should definitely remember and choose to see um, and increase our knowledge of because, come on, it's, it's of utmost concern. So to, to summarize the exercises or the tips to help you improve your gratitude, inshallah, is number one, choose to see the good and to focus on the good. All of us are going to have problems and challenges and unfortunate events. Uh, it's how we choose to see it that impacts us um, and really shapes the direction of our lives. Uh, number two, remember to seek knowledge because the more you know knowledge and circumference of reality that you can see, the more data points you will have to actually be grateful. Remember the timeline. So give this timeline a try. That way it helps you map out your life uh, in a very balanced way and see the positive and the negatives in your life. Remember to practice daily dhikr, re remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly and, and, and doing afkar and dua every day because this again is about you remembering God so that He can remember you. 
Um, next, show gratitude to people and to anybody who shows kindness because this is a sign of good character. And lastly, if you can, write down a list of 10 things that you're really grateful for and make that a visual reminder for you on a daily basis. Uh, you could also record it, make an audio file and play it on your phone and say, I am grateful for this and that. And that way you always remember the things that are actually great in your life and you don't end up the, in this negative tunnel vision, which leads to uh, stress and anxiety and depression and constriction. So I hope, I'll, uh, inshallah, this was uh, beneficial. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us uh, more grateful and not cover up the truth or the blessings as we see it. And um, thank you for listening. Um, I really appreciate, you know, all of the feedback we've gotten so far. Uh, please leave a review, subscribe, share with your friends, and uh, pray for us. Inshallah, we're trying to get some uh, guests uh, on our show very soon. Um, but, you know, people are very busy. But we're very excited about some of the uh, prospective uh, guests we have coming on. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you next time on Coffee with Kareem.